Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo and our adventures here at the foothills of Castle Myers where we are currently running around with tiny little raccoon babies. Uh, and yes, actually, there was quite a bit that actually happened um, without you guys because we did a lot of work, friends. We fixed some of the lonely hearts amongst our raccoons and our foxes. We managed to go ahead and finally get the one-way glass, which means that we are currently enjoying a much more peaceful life for all of our very fussy skunks who I think I hear like making those loud chattering sounds, which is kind of awesome. Unless that was the raccoons. Uh, and speaking of the raccoons, we ended up with a super famous baby. I don't know why, but this is actually one of the most popular, adorable creatures here inside of the raccoon exhibit. And she is our little baby, Nikki. So she's only a silver quality raccoon, um, but she is deeply beloved by the guest because she has the highest appeal out of all of the animals in this entire enclosure. So there's there's kind of like a Nikki fan club going on right now, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, oh, is she gonna play in the water with her sibling? And then this is her sibling, Sky. And these two were indeed named after you guys. I'm sorry we lost like almost 20 minutes of working on the zoo together. Um, there, there was just a hiccup. I suppose we were thrown in the dungeon of the castle for a little bit. But glory be to the auto save that actually literally saved us. Oh dear. And yes, we need to work on the bat situation in just a second here. <laughs> Also, maybe like the whole situation of this place being super dark when it does become night. We'll work on that. We're getting there. Progress is slowly but surely being made. But as you guys can see, we did put down the one-way glass in a whole bunch of spots. And I'm really, 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 really in love with it um, because we were able to lower the fence so it's not nearly as much of an eyesore. And I think if I move this talk point a little bit in just the right position, we can actually throw food for the skunks now with the what's that smell, smell animal talk, which I, I completely love. Um, and then what happens if we manage talks? Oh, 50 people came to the talk, that's so cool. Can I actually do like linked seating with these? I wonder if I could actually get some seating put in here so that we could like have people listen to talks about our skunks. That would be really fun. <laughs> But we do have other things I need to have us work on, uh, including welcoming a hawk. So we have Hawk, who is one of the gold quality males actually born from our very long uh, lineage. He had a bunch of siblings. He actually had, I think, 13 siblings. And his parents were Ko and Sunflower, who are unfortunately no longer with us. And I think Hawk actually represents the third generation of the foxes that we have. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, he had, he had a lot of siblings. <laughs> So he had like 11 other siblings, which is kind of amazing uh, from Sunflower. Yeah, so Sunflower has passed away as well as her mate Ko, but we went ahead and we actually got Hawk. We renamed him and he now has a new mate that we got. Uh, from the breeding programs named Summer. And she's actually a pretty high quality uh, fox as well. So hopefully they will have some really healthy, happy babies that we can release to the wild because uh, we don't need to worry about money anymore, guys. Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of doing great on finances. Thanks to the amazing, amazing, always full cave cafe restaurant the flying fruit cave cafe look at this this place is packed people are paying a premium to enjoy the premium foods that we have to offer uh, i am pretty proud about this and i'm also remembering that we need to come in and we need to have our cave mushroom chefs go ahead and get better training because the more they're trained oh what the heck zuzurai the skunk is already dying of old age zuzurai she lived most of her life a, a squeaking, stressed, striped little mess. Oh, rest in peace, Suzerai. Do I have any kind of like skunky memorial I can put down? Just as we were about to have Skunk Scholar Glarn, who we also need to train better, uh, go ahead and give a speech about her. Oh, okay. Actually, that does make me wonder. I haven't looked yet, but what are some of the things that we could decorate with from the Twilight Pack? Like... 
Uh, do we have... <gasps> we have a little gargoyle skunk! Oh my gosh. What better way to remember Zuzurai than being a ang the angry little squeak skunk she was? Look at this. Oh my gosh. I, I, I love these gargoyles. And we can go ahead and we can come in and we can grab the memorial for Zuzurai. And we can actually... Zuzurai, let me create your memorial with the brass. And we can go ahead and put it down right over here. I love it. I absolutely love it. Also, oh my gosh, the cockroaches are having issues. Why are people actually looking at the exhibits now? Why did they ignore them for 10 years? <laughs> okay, we need to go ahead and we are going to try to get... Um, I think the highest aged males, no, let's go for the the uh, ones that have the lowest cash will be the ones that we yank out. I think that's how it works. And we'll get down, oh my gosh, there's 12 females, holy cow. So cash, the lowest females first. We'll get down like, how about two females, two males? I think that should go ahead and work and manage population. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So in theory, I think the ones we now have should be the ones that are worth the most and then they can continue breeding. And I need to probably swap out the cockroaches in a little bit. Yeah, these all look like lower quality cockroaches, but I think we also haven't swapped our giant burrowing cockroaches out. Oh wait, no, these are the ones we're storing, okay. So let's look at any species. And we need the burrowing cockroach, please. Which I would love to learn more about, actually. Oh dear, and actually we have some like, some gold quality ones in here. So does that mean, which ones do we actually have in the exhibit bin, in Creepy Crawly's exhibit? All right, let's check. It's giant burrowing cockroaches, please. Uh, location. So actually, no, look at this. The ones in Creepy Crawlies are actually really high quality. Nice. So that means we can go ahead and we can just release all of the other ones. That's fantastic. Okay. So we'll come down the list. Do, 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 do. Oh, we have Frightful. Oh, okay. Frightful might have to go back in there. Frightful, Rainy, and Storm. Okay. They might have to go back in there and we'll just set them to like contraceptives. And in fact, we might, oh no, did I, oh geez. Uh, yeah, we might have to go ahead and give them maybe their retirement. We could give them a little retirement house when they don't need to have any more babies. I love that idea. And that way, like if we, we see one in here and we recognize it as like a core, like, oh, that's one of the ones we really want to keep track of, then we'll do that. Um, and I love the fact, okay. 20 is not a lot of conservation credit points, but we don't have a lot, so that helps. It, ooh, more mechanic research. Okay, good. All right, barrier's done, which means we can now have Stonemason Perry, who we can finally start training. Let's get him trained up uh, and unlocking the drink shops, because heckin, we need to have more options for drinks, because it's 102 here. I still have no fathomable clue why it is 102, but it is 102 here. <laughs> okay, so before we go ahead and finally start working on the next things, okay, never mind. The bats are requiring my attention. All right, I'm sorry, little ones, hang in there. Okay, so the ones with the lowest appeal of males, let's get, I think we have too many females. So let's get the lowest appeal females down and we'll keep in 18. I think that'll work because I think one of their, their problems is that there's just so many of them. Or is it the exhibit being, oh, the cleanliness. You know what? I think we need to get like our bat expert Colleen. There we go. I think we need to get bat expert Colleen like just here all the time. Because I think right now Bad Expert Colleen is also trying to like clean the cockroach exhibit way over there. And we kind of need them to just live with our poor our poor bats. Um 
Yeah, because bat zone for bat expert Colleen, who's now going for a rest. Oh my gosh, we need to train everybody. Everybody is like, rejoice. The plague doctors we might hold off of. No, no, no offense, plague doctors. But rejoice, all of our staff. Uh, there's an abundance of wealth in the castle now, so we can finally start trying. <laughs> we can finally start trying to get some of these people, like, properly. Uh, properly some backup because we definitely have too high of a workload for a lot of these guys and um, properly trained up like they, they have been the backbone of our our like villagers that have kept the village thriving I appreciate that also summer is feeling stressed from what my dear you should be able to see any of these people watching you maybe I need to raise the fence a little we'll keep an eye out all right you're okay summer so summer's feeling better now. Um, we have high amounts of litter. Let's see. Arboreal feeding platform cannot be, oh, that's fine. There, we don't even need to worry about like a, a feeding platform in here. I really want to see the raccoons climb on these things though. I will admit that. <laughs> oh yeah, summer's about to mate. Do we have a new, a new, yes, a new lineage of fox babies on the way, huzzah. Speaking of babies, uh, the flying fruit bats, we actually have the wrong ones breeding in here. We do need to sort this situation out because I need to do a little bit of uh, management of our animals because with the fruit bats, so the Egyptian fruit bat right over here, Oh, how I love them so. Uh, the Egyptian fruit bats actually need the gold quality ones present in the pens and these lower quality ones. Okay, yeah, the ones that are like pets. Okay, I need to come over here and we'll manage their, their populations from here. Egyptian fruit bat, let's sort by location. So the ones who are like bronze quality and below I need to yoink because we don't want them breeding. Oh, that's Ruffy. Hey, Ruffy. And then Jamal here. Okay, yeah, these guys need to come out of Jurassic World because I accidentally set it to remove like the highest quality of our, our wonderful uh, Egyptian fruit bats and that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> so we had a whole bunch of like the unhealthiest of the fruit bats breeding for a long time. Again, not what I meant to do. I'm very sorry about that. Oh, hey, it's Chonk. Okay, Chonk, we just need to set you so that you don't have any more babies. And so there's the trade center. Okay, and then we'll come down the list. Okay, Addison is gonna have to go back out because she's adopted. And then let's see. Isabel was also adopted, so we can't do anything. Yeah, any of the ones that are adopted, except for Parker, no longer need to be breeding. We just have to wait until they kind of pass away. There we go. Oh, and we almost have 100 fruit bats. Fun fact, one of my goals was to have 100 gold quality fruit bats, just because. Just because I thought that sounded amazing. And we can release all of them to the wild for 126. So 22 of them to the wild for 126 conservation credits. That is fantastic. And now that we're sorting our fruit bat situation back out, let's see, sort them. And then I think, yeah, how many are in the trade center? Quite a few still. So what we might do is we have a whole bunch in Jurassic World that are pretty healthy now. And then Kaylin, you were adopted, so we'll just make it so that you don't have any more babies. So instead of putting, oh, oh and she just reached infertile elderhood anyway, so I don't need to have her on contraceptives. That's so funny. <laughs> what we might actually do for a bunch of our fruit bats is we might leave the ones that are in Jurassic World currently there and the ones I need to move back out who are in the trade center um, and high quality, I think it's time to start a second colony of fruit bats. Also, Summer is apparently about to have some babies. I feel like we have done this song and dance a few times now though, friends. I feel like our foxes are like, or all of our animals are like, yes, it is time for offspring. And then we're excited and we're twiddling our thumbs and waiting for it. And then 
summer. Like, I'm excited. I'm hopeful. Huh. But I don't know, guys. I... We'll come back. We've seen the fox cubs be born a few times. It's been exciting. Um, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Oh, and speaking of lonely hearts, our poor wombats. We have Bray and Wren, the two boys. Uh, how many wombats does a wombat like to wombat with? One male and one female. So the, the boys have a life expectancy of 21 years and they have just been a pair of brothers kind of chilling for a long time now let's actually see if we can compare the uh the brothers and one brother bray he is currently eight and a half years old and then ren Ren actually doesn't have as good of genetics as his his older brother. So I think we're going to actually allow Ren, who was born to Chak and Linda. Oh, blessed Linda, who just desperately wanted to have a wombat child for like her whole life and she just never could. We're going to go ahead and we're going to have Ren be released to the wild. He's young. He's fairly healthy, and he has a lot of his lifespan remaining, so that's a ton of conservation credits. Holy cow. And the benefit that, that he just gave his brother is that now we can come on in, and we can search for ye olde common wombat. Actually, how old is the common wombat species? Like, when did it evolve? These are very pertinent questions. And... The only thing available right now is an infertile female, so. <laughs> okay, I need some sort of, like, reminder screen for myself of, like, my wombat is lonely. So we have, we do have a bronze uh, statue of the raccoon since we've completed the bronze level challenge. Um, whoops, okay. That's, that's actually kind of hilarious. Didn't mean to put that, that statue there. I'm trying to go for, there we go. So we have a little wombat and he is very adorable and he needs a mate. What else could I, oh, look at these jack-o'-lanterns. They're so cool. And the masonry, oh, that's so cool. And then we've got, oh, look at the little wombat. This is just, no, Chusu, oh, geez. All right, we'll have to manage the skunks in just a second. But we do have a lonely, lonely hearted wombat. I'm just gonna have to find a way I wonder if there's like a reminder, spooky eyes, to like I, I, some some sort of sign I could give myself to be like, don't forget, you like have a very lonely. Oh, that's really cool. You know what? A fire. Why not? I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, the lonely wombat. There, maybe that'll help remind me. I don't know. We'll find out. That's just really kind of cool to leave there. Hopefully, it won't catch everything on fire. Apparently, my skunks are interbreeding. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. All right. Choose soon. Okay, so... Let's see. That's interesting. Chusu. I can't release you to the wild now, my dear. Um... Who? How did that even happen? Oh, because she grew up. Oh! Because... I see, I see. Okay, Annalyn... So I'm gonna put you on contraceptives too. Za, literally, oh my gosh, he, he's, he's passing away in his food dish. You guys, <laughs> oh, oh Za. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest though, friends. I can't really imagine a better way for an old skunk to go. He's leaving behind a few more babies at the last minute, and he's literally stuffing his face full of more pellets of food. And he gets to go out on top that way, and also freak us out with, like, twitching on the ground. That's fine. That's totally fine. Oh, his tiny little teeth! <laughs> okay, okay. Rest in peace, Za. Rest in peace. Oh my word, there have been so many developments. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab Zaw's memorial as well. Because I very much love our angry hissing skunk pile. And yes, we need to give other animals memorials too. And also we need to kind of like... This definitely feels like the graveyard theme right here, by the way. Very interesting. <clears throat> uh, multiple animals have low welfare. Why? Oh, it's the cleanliness again. 
Oh, I totally forgot about that. I totally did. Okay. All right. Let's see. We're, we're going to get... Did I get another caretaker? Bad expert Colleen? Are you kidding me? I didn't know you had to prepare the food for the exhibit animals like that. I thought you could... Oh, no wonder. Colleen has been trying so hard to take care of these bats the whole time. And I've just been like, la di da di da di da completely ignoring that. Colleen's had to run halfway across the world every time to be able to make the, the fruit for the fruit bats. For shame, Siri. For shame. Poor, poor Colleen. Can I just like... How much to put another village house? Just like right... I was going to put skunks over here, but now I kind of think this is an adorable building. So let, let, let's, let's fix this. Because this is going to be our little fruit farm. Oh dear. Now it's all dark. Help. Okay, good. Now it's light again. But we're going to fix this. Because I did not know that Colleen had to actually go. And unlike a lot of exhibits. Manually make a whole bunch of food for our wee little fruit bats. So Colleen's about to get a whole new house. And then we will try to plant something that looks sort of like fruit trees. Next to it. So there's that. It's freaking adorable. We're going to go ahead and name this uh, Colleen's Fruit. Oops. Fruit Orchard. <laughs> I feel so bad. They've just been running all the way across this whole time. And no wonder that's making it harder for my poor little fruit bats. Jeez Louise. Okay. And you know what? This is probably going to be nifty because maybe we'll have another, another keeper. Oops, okay, we did not need two of them. Maybe we'll start having a, another keeper go ahead and get, like, included uh, on this side of the zoo. And maybe we can start putting in, you know, just, just perhaps we could start potentially putting in, um, let's see, are these all? Yeah, these all should be under your, your care as well. Why is the bat zone in... The bat zone should not be, yeah, should not be under the care of, okay, I had my keepers running back and forth. No wonder everyone was so tired. <laughs> okay, there we go. That should definitely hopefully help things out a little bit and tidy that up. The cave is still looking amazing. Has, are people, $15 for fruit bats. That is a crime against nature, if you ask me. And maybe we will still see if we can like sneak a skunk like over in here, but I don't know how broad of a, a world the skunk needs. However, you know what could fit over here? That bear that we have supposed to like put in ages and ages and ages and ages ago. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this adventure. If you guys could, do please leave a like for all of our silly fruit bats and all of our silly Siri moments and all of our silly skunks. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.